he did the school shit, yeah. He, he got loans, he got shit to do. So, but he's a talented brother, man. He's an impression. He does a lot of stuff. I don't know what he's gonna do tonight, because we never know because he's so super talented. From Chicago, lives in Atlanta. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. LeVar Burton. Give it up, LeVar! <laughs> LeVar Walker is <laughs> here. I go hard and hard, can't understand my last so long. I must have superpowers, rap 225,000 hours. Get it calculated, do the math, I made a thousand songs to make you move it. So I'll turn it off. It's Walker, dang it. You come in no goddamn LeVar Burton. Yeah. No goddamn Reed Rainbow. This old cheap ass promoter hired me, man. I, you know, I got here, I got off the boat, and everything is beautiful. I saw the beach, I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And we started driving to where I'm staying. And I mean, yo, we stand in a goddamn slave house. I'm like, where the fuck is this? It was like, when we got there, a brother came out. What y'all doing around right here? Like, where are we? Where is the beaches and the beauty that they have? Cheap ass promoter, man. That's why I still work in the pharmacy, because, you know, promoters, man. I, Last show I did, I did a, a, a comedy club, you know, the black-owned comedy club, and I did this this weekend with two thousand. Okay, now I knew it was gonna be a problem because at the end of the week, when I went to the little office to get my money, the brother wrote the check. Did he tell me, "Hey man, look, don't deposit it till Wednesday." I said, I said, excuse me, don't deposit it till Wednesday. Cause that's when you know where all the funds and everything go through. So I said, all right, cool, all right. So Wednesday comes. I get up first thing in the morning. I get my ass down there to the bank and I deposited this check into the ATM. Now. When I put the check into the ATM to deposit it, I knew it was a problem because a crying laughing face scrolled <laughs> across the ATM and spit the goddamn check out. <laughs> so I immediately called. I said, yo, man, I tried to put the check in the thing. Like, you know, like the ATM spit, how did I don't even know how the ATM like knew this check wasn't good. He spit it out. So I called and said, yo, man, I, I, I'm here. I got to put the check in the bank. It's Wednesday. The ATM spit the check out. He was like, man, I didn't know you was going to go Wednesday morning. What? What time am I supposed to waste my damn money? Give me my money. So he finally, he say, look, man, what's your cash app? I gave him a cash app. Yeah. So he put $1,000 on the cash app. I say, all right, cool. All right, man, well, I'm going to take care of you now. I'm going to take care of you. Now, that's Wednesday. Now, Thursday came. Now, he put, he put the 1000 in there. So Thursday comes. I wake up in the morning. Now, you ever, when somebody owe you some money, you ever, like, Feels some kind of way, you're like, you know what, I'm gonna wait till about four or five. <laughs> you start feeling guilty by asking for your damn money. <laughs> you, know, you know, I waited, you, you know, I waited. You know, three o'clock came, that's when you look in the mirror because you, you, you tell yourself what you gonna say, you know. <laughs> you tell them right now I want my goddamn money, I'm tired of playing. I done did this show a week ago. I need my goddamn money. So it comes and, and, and I, 
I, I, I texted him. Get no text back. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and now I start calling, blowing them up, calling them mother numbers. So after, after trying to call him a hundred times, he finally called me. Hey man, I'm like, what's up, man? It's just been a rough week. <laughs> no light bill was high. I think this global warming, the way this global warming is just increasing. The, the, I gotta run that AC. You know, we had a plumbing issue in the back. Kitchen ran out of food. I mean, you know my mama died. But... <laughs> so he tells me all this. Like, right after he told me his mama died, I got quiet on the phone. I said, oh, man, that's crazy. I took a deep breath. I said, Ooh. And then I said, so you gonna put the money in there today? <laughs> I need my goddamn money. I know he told it, and that's, and that's why I still have to work. That's a pharmacist, man. Because of that type of shit. That has me crazy. Man. I work, I went to school, and I got this doctorate degree in pharmacy. All right, my ass, no one whatever. <laughs> got a damn doctorate degree in pharmacy, but yet I find myself working behind the goddamn cash register at CVS, ringing up cookies and juice and milk and goddamn cereal and dog food and just dealing with ignorant ass people all day. A lot of y'all make me sick. You need medicine, I need medicine to deal with y'all funky ass. Got to give y'all flu shots now. You know, I ain't go to medical school. I never thought I would have to administer shots and touch people. <laughs> and if you go to CBS Walgreens, get a flu shot, you should be ashamed of yourself. We stand in front of goddamn potato chips as I'm injecting <laughs> some foreign substance into your goddamn shoulder. I was working at the farm this one brother said, yo, man, I'll get a flu shot. I'm like, look, right after I ring the dog food up, I'm gonna come give you a flu shot. I look over here in the alley, his underwear. I said, man, you ain't gotta take all your goddamn clothes off getting that goddamn flu shot. Put your clothes on. Shit. And if I give you a flu shot, let me tell you something. Now. When I administer the flu shot, I do it intramuscularly. It means it's gonna go right here in the shoulder, right in this uh, muscle right here. Now, before I inject you, I must take an alcohol swab that is white as a cloud and wipe the area to clean it. Now, if I take that alcohol swab and wipe you, and I look at that cotton and it looks like I've been trained in transmission fluid. God damn it, you don't need a flu shot, you need a bath! <laughs> Bring your stinking ass in here. <laughs> God damn. Nasty ass. It's disgusting. You can get on my damn nerves in the back of that store, man. I have to deal with stupid people. Old men don't know how to check out. Them old bastards, that they don't know how to use the damn debit reader. It's not hard. Put your card in, put in your pen, and walk off. Old fuckers look at the debit machine like it's something they never seen before. Every time it's the same thing. All right, Mr. Charles, that's gonna be twenty-four ninety-nine. All right. <laughs> okay, you need to swipe your car. Oh, you need to swipe. <laughs> Let 
Okay, it didn't do that. Okay, you need to put your pen in. Oh, on my pen. Yes, sir. Now, I tell him to put the pen in. There's people standing in line. This is what he does. All right, so you need to put your pen in. Oh, all right, hold on one second. Excuse me, could y'all turn around while I put my pen in? Now they done respected him and turned around. This is him putting the pen in. All right, here we go. All right, eight, nine, three. That hip be bad. It's ridiculous, man. Don't let an old person write a check. They need to ban checks. <laughs> Shit take too long. Especially if you in line and you got places to go. And the older person writing the check, because they don't just write a check. You know? They got to balance the checkbook. <laughs> write a letter to the president, go over their grocery list. Or he's writing a check for a small amount. It should be six dollars. They're writing a the check. It's gonna be six dollars, all right. <coughs> I'm gonna write you a check. <laughs> okay. You say six dollars? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, all right. Six dollars. <laughs> okay, do I make it up to you? <laughs> I got you with that one, didn't I? Okay, I make it out to the store. Yes, sir. All right. How do you spell that? CBS. Goddamn. <laughs> Take it all goddamn day to do nothing. <laughs> Shit is ridiculous. They're tired of dealing with people, man. Sometimes I gotta work in the hood. I work all over. I work in the hood. I work in trailer parks, everywhere, man. I'm working in the hood, you know. Girls come in. And if y'all got some cousins or something, cause yeah, y'all just good black folks in here. There ain't no niggas in here tonight, so. <laughs> I'll tell y'all little cousin, whoever, if they got more than one baby daddy, give all them kids one last name, sure. <laughs> It saved me to have to run the 28 different baskets, picking all that shit out. <laughs> I'm picking up for Tequavius Johnson, Walter Gillespie, <laughs> Tawani Green, <laughs> and Julio Alvarez. Damn, you got a Mexican baby too? <laughs> I got to deal with people on Medicaid. I ain't got nothing against nobody on Medicaid. I grew up on Medicaid. This is what pissed me off the other day. The lady came in there with seven medications. Seven. The shit was a dollar. One dollar. Just one dollar. Seven medicines. Big bag. And I was a professional. I got the bag. I said, ma'am, for all seven medicines, it's going to be one dollar. <gasps> a dollar? <laughs> Sir, I don't have a dollar. Well, bitch, you about to die today. If you ain't got four quarters of ten dimes, you don't deserve to be on the earth. And get this goddamn Louis Vuitton bag and get the fuck out of my face. See, your health priorities are fucked up. Huh? <laughs> now, we done turned into the new crack dealers. The damn, this Percocet shit is just an epidemic. Woo, especially in the trailer park areas. It's bad. I had to work with redneck. And listen, typically, if you get a Percocet prescription and this 30 days supply, I shouldn't see you for 30 days. <laughs> if you get the prescription January, I shouldn't see you till February. <laughs> Working in this redneck area, guy comes in and knew if he had a Percocet prescription because all Percocet prescriptions come with a story. Who's they woke me? Hey, brother. Boy, oh, yeah, brother, I've been about. You know, you ain't brother when you shit. Brother, I've been. 
I bet I done drove all over Georgia looking for it. Looking at about the temp store I've been to, brother. And I've just been going through a lot of problems. You know, I end up getting T-boned. I'm right there on the expressway. got T-boned right inside of the car. End up hurting my lower back right there. And end up swelling up my lower disc about that big. And I just want to get this field, man. You know, it just... Love just ain't been right, you know. My wife ended up leaving me, my dog died, I just... I just want to get this feeling, brother. And I feel it. I'm so happy. Oh, brother, I really appreciate it, man. You just don't know what this is going to be, man. I love this is so much pain and everything you got going on. I appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. It's January 1st. January 2nd. Hey, brother. I know I came in here. I, and I know I came in here yesterday and January 1st with my right hand to God. I told you that I got T-bone right there on that expressway right there and I ended up hurting my lower back and that thing swole up about that big. You know, that life ain't been the same with my dog died and my wife left me. When I swear to God, you gave me that prescription yesterday. Somebody broke in my truck, they stole all their field, man. I just been in so much pain, I just don't know what to do, brother. And I don't mean to jeopardize your job or anything you got going on like that. But I don't know if you'd be so kind just to fill me the prescription for me again so I get up. Now I'm a Christian man. I took his word for it, you know? Say, you know what? For you, I'm gonna do it. Oh, brother, that means the world. <laughs> I tell you, brother, they just don't make them like you no more. You know, you know how in the world nobody trusts nobody, man. You good brother, man. And when I tell you, I'm gonna give you one of the greatest yelps you've ever seen in your life. I appreciate you, brother. It was January 2nd. You left. January 3rd. <laughs> Brother, I'm so sorry. Well, I know I came in here yesterday and I told you, you remember me? I got T-bone right there. I'm right down the front wing, got T-bone. I hurt my back right down there and that thing swole up about that big man. My right hand to God. Well, you gave me that prescription yesterday, man. I was attacked by a bear. <laughs> he took out the field. I didn't want to know he'd be so kind and gracious, his brother. To fill the prescription again. No! I'm not feeling it! Oh! You fucking nigger! I hate you! But I didn't even get mad. You know why? Because I watched that man leave the store and get into his house and drive off. I said, you losing in life. That was the first time I saw a mobile home with a chimney on it. I said, oh, damn. <laughs> it's too much, man. I work with Spanish people too sometimes. It's so funny because I don't I don't speak uh, Spanish. And usually, if I'm in a Spanish-speaking neighborhood, they don't speak English. I can always tell because they, they give me a look when they come in. I can tell it's like the sun in their eyes when they walk in. They, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Spanish. Now, now, after he realized I don't speak the Spanish, we end up playing a game of charades <laughs> at the cash register. He, he, hey, no, no Spanish. Yeah, no Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. 
É, é, de bebê, de bebê, de sique. Ele sique de bebê. Now, after going back and forth with him for an hour and a half, he finally decides to come up with the bright idea to talk to his son to speak fluent English that's been standing by him the whole goddamn time. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who is the person who's 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 the person? Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> the funniest thing is when people say they got the wrong medicine. That is funny, man. This one old cat came in, he thought he had the wrong medicine. I can always tell when people think they got the wrong medicine because they'll hold the pill bottle and, and walk through the whole pharmacy like it's a torch. They'll hold it. They'll hold it in their hand. I could tell he thought he got the wrong man because I saw how he was walking back because I could see y'all before y'all walk in. This is how he was walking in with the field bottle. <laughs> I said, can I help you, sir? I think y'all done gave me the wrong shit. <laughs> And I'm gonna sue this motherfucker. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me take a look at what you got. <laughs> no, sir, this is the Viagra that your doctor <laughs> prescribes you. Then he gets embarrassed. Well, the shit ain't working right. I said, excuse me? Shit, the shit <laughs> ain't working right. I said, well, what happened? I took this shit last night. And my dick only got hard in the middle. I said, what? I said, you better fold it over and put it in like a wallet. <laughs> I'm a pharmacist, not a goddamn urologist. My name is LeBar Walker, that's my time.